Often at a GRDC Grains Research Update, there'd be international speakers who'd share their experience and knowledge. At the Gunter Windy Update, one speaker who shared his international experience did so from a very different perspective, as a Fulbright scholar. The purpose of the Fulbright was really trying to understand um, the landscape for agricultural technologies, where new technologies are emerging, um, how those technologies inform future challenges, both at a global scale, uh, but also how those technologies will inform some of the challenges that we have uh, at the farm level as well. The study tour was a quick four-month trip to attend Texas A&M University and see where European ag tech R&D is heading. As Professor Bailey told the update audience, the focus of his mission was game-changing technologies in agriculture. There's been large investments in agricultural technologies in the last five to six years and in fact last year there was as much as 20 billion dollars invested in ag tech and if you go back probably six, seven years ago that was probably only about two or three billion dollars. So there's been a rapid investment in ag tech globally and one of the things I wanted to do was look at you know, what's fueling that investment, where are those technologies being developed and one of the things that underpins this story is the, the growing trend I guess in terms of our population growth and that by the end of the century it's likely to be 11 billion people and so what that says is if we want to save the world in terms of uh, food and and other resources, we need to produce 50% more than what we're currently producing now. Where will the 50% growth in food production come from? In Australia, arable land is a finite resource. But how we farm makes a difference. While larger farms are generally more productive, adoption of technology and innovative farming practices is related to increased productivity and farmer profitability in the order of 20%. If all farms performed this well, output would increase 18% and farm incomes 24%. While increasing farm size can drive economies of scale, of key importance is matching inputs, such as labour and machinery, to the size of a farm business to maximise profitability. And rising productivity helps offset falling terms of trade. Where there's still a challenge is yield gap, the difference between potential and actual yield. In most developing countries, it's greater than 50%, and under that for exporting nations like Australia. Wider adoption of agricultural technologies will have the greatest impact on closing that gap, according to Professor Bailey. Well, I guess, you know, if you think back in history, uh, there's been waves of technologies being developed and we can go back to what we call the first revolution which was really around mechanisation. But then there was, uh, the, you might recall, the Green Revolution and the Green Revolution was in the 60s and that was the introduction of irrigation, uh, fertiliser and ag chem uh, to get large increases in, in production. So we had something like three times increase in production through the Green Revolution. Uh, and then more recent times we've had uh, genetics and we've had you know, precision, ag precision agriculture and conservation farming and those sort of things. But the next wave or the fourth revolution is around, uh, I guess, electronics, digital agriculture, automation, robotics, those sorts of things. Professor Bailey told delegates ag machinery manufacturers are not only developing autonomous machinery, they are working towards making it possible for multi-brand machines to talk to each other via the cloud and a visit to the Agri-Technica trade show in Germany gave Professor Bailey a chance to see some of that latest agricultural technology. And this is some common thinking around um, where tractors and, and machinery is, is likely to go from a European perspective and this is what they call their swarm farm uh, initiative. Uh, but also, in, in, particularly in Europe, there's a, a trend, if you like, to going towards uh, renewable energy. And so the tractor here on the left, the blue tractor, is being run on bio, uh, bio, uh, biogas, biomethane I should say, and the operating costs are about 30% less uh, and 80% reduction in overall emissions. So there's also a focus not only increasing our productivity on farm, our profitability, but also looking at some of the environmental benefits, uh, impacts as well. From what's happening in Europe, Professor Bailey's update presentation moved on to global investment. Ag Funder is a US-based investment platform that brings together venture capitalists and innovation opportunities and annually reports on agri-food investments globally by grouping technologies into various categories. This provides a good sense of ag tech developments and emerging technologies. Ag biotech is one of the categories in particular. The thing I wanted to point out here is the development of microbiomes, 
uh, and uh, large investments in this space around seed coating so that they identify uh, naturally occurring microbiomes and, and incorporate that into seed coatings to uh, provide some sort of beneficial to the plant. Gene editing is also part of the mix in this space uh, and this is where you're trying to get the, the, the plant to exhibit different traits without actually genetically modifying the plant. Another category in this fourth wave world is the agribusiness marketplace which is seeing farmer to farmer networking broaden. The interest in this category, if you like, is where a farmer might be able to identify where they can get the cheapest, uh, cheapest uh, drum of Roundup, so a little bit like a Trivago for, for identifying the, the best price, if you like, for ag chemicals. For farm management software, the focus at Agritechnica was on data connectiveness. Tractor manufacturers and third parties such as AgriRouter are leading the charge. In robotics, the way ahead is machines that will go beyond automating a process. There's a couple of development uh, pathways here. One is around uh, improving the performance of current machinery, so adding more and more features to current machinery versus smaller multiple machines that are modular and, ro and, and uh, consist of robotic um, swarms. So the idea here is moving from highly automated uh, machinery via uh, artificial intelligence to fully autonomous systems. Professor Bailey's presentation finished on novel farming systems, which looked at ways of intensifying production. If you look at some of the vertical farming operations that are currently underway, 95% less land, 95% less water, uh, and 10 times more yield with no pesticides. And these systems are really highly automated. What broadacre farmers can take from such novel farming systems is the recognition that ag tech is changing farming and the type of people who will support agriculture in the future. Ag tech companies in the US are interested in artificial intelligence and they are looking to align um, you know, their operations with skill sets that are normally seen in Silicon Valley and those places. And so you're seeing a change of the sort of people that might be um, employed by those companies in the future, but that also informs the sort of people that might be employed on farm in the future as well. Professor Craig Bailey from the University of Southern Queensland. And this video is one in a series of update videos recorded at the 2020 GRDC Grains Research Updates. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.